today is probably the biggest meal prep that I've ever done. So we'll see how it goes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, I'm Lauren. I am on a journey to lose 150 pounds. So far I have lost over 55 pounds on the WW Blue Plan. Since October of 2020, I have been documenting my reboot of my weight loss journey here on my YouTube channel. Check out the link above for the playlist that shows all of my weight loss journey videos. I do weekly and monthly weigh-ins and updates along with sharing recipes, grocery hauls, meal planning, all to help others out there and myself succeed and have accountability on the WW Blue Program or whatever weight loss journey or health journey that you're on. Today I am sharing with you all my monthly bulk meal prepping. I'm a huge fan of meal prepping. I love to pre-plan out the meals that my family is going to be having for the week so I can best stay on track with my plan, tracking my points, having groceries in the house and being prepared so I'm not running out for fast food or pizza pickup. Today we're doing a monthly prep though. This is gonna be a little bit different than a weekly or bi-weekly meal prep that I've done before. And today is probably the biggest meal prep that I've ever done. So we'll see how it goes. I went ahead and went to Aldi over the weekend and I just checked out their meat department, saw what they had on sale and what was kind of available. And I saw they had whole chickens and a really good sized pork shoulder roast on sale. So I went ahead and picked those up. My husband just got a smoker for our backyard from his parents for a little gift when we moved into our new house over Thanksgiving. So he has been totally game for anything I want to throw at him to put on the smoker outside. He's going to smoke the meat for me for prep and I'm gonna take you all along with how I season and prep it, pull it, portion it, and freeze it for the upcoming month, along with a handful of other breakfast and snack preps that I'm going to be doing that should last us a good portion of the month for some quick and easy things to grab and stay healthy from our fridge and freezer. I have about another 100 pounds to lose, so I'm really trying to kick off January with a great start and really start making some headway on this weight loss journey. I'm really proud that I have been able to maintain and continue my weight loss progression even during the holidays this year. But I think like a lot of people out there, I am ready for a fresh start. Let's start fresh in 2021 and let's be prepared and plan so we can succeed on our goals. This prep is going to happen over the course of a couple days. So if you wanna jump around, check out the timestamps down below, as well as all of the recipe links that I'm going to be using today. Let's get cooking. When I am doing a big batch cooking, I like to go ahead and prep my space and kitchen first. I went ahead and deep cleaned our kitchen after the holidays. I'm sure this will last for like a day, but we are all clean in here. I have mixing bowls ready to go. I have my cutting board. My oil is out as well as my tools. I know I'm going to be needing a saute pan first up. So I have that ready to go as well as of course some coffee on because I know I'm going to need to pick me up with this big day of cooking. So here I have my plan for our prep. I like to use this planner weekly to help plan out what my meals and dinners are. And then now I have my monthly bulk prep and this is everything I'm going to be showing in today's video. We have our prepped and cooked shredded chicken and pork, as well as today for muffin day, we're going to be doing egg cup muffins, carrot mini muffins, as well as some English muffin bread. This bread guys is so amazing. It's not a WW recipe, but as long as you're eating in portion, I'm all about a balanced life. So we're gonna make a couple of those to have in the freezer for easy breakfasts. And since we're gonna be doing those whole chickens on the smoker, I'm going to have the bones left over, which means this is the perfect chance for me to try out making my own bone broth in the crock pot. I know you can run to the grocery store and get a box of chicken broth for like $2. A box of bone broth usually costs between four and five dollars a piece. So we're making our own. It's gonna be super affordable since we're already using the chickens for other things. It's something I would have discarded. So we're adding in some veggies, cooking it nice, low and slow, and hopefully we're gonna get all of those great health benefits that bone broth brings. A lot of people say it's really good to help reset and restore your gut health 
It adds a lot of healthy nutrients to your dishes and you can use it in so many ways to make rice or pasta. You can also obviously use it as a base to any homemade soups. It's still winter and soups are a great low point option when you're on the WW plan. And I usually include some sort of a soup or chili in a large batch to my weekly meal plan as well. So stay tuned to the end. I'm sharing all of my ideas for meals that I can use my prepped ingredients for at the end of the video. But again, everything's linked down below if you want to jump around. So first up, let's start with prepping our egg muffin cups. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of my ingredients and we're going to get whipping them up. For this recipe, we're using eggs, turkey breakfast sausage, green bell pepper, onion, baby spinach, and shredded cheddar cheese or reduced fat shredded cheddar cheese, as well as some hash browns to help hold their shape all together. The first thing I'm doing is just prepping the veggies, the onion, and the bell pepper. I'm going to go ahead and chop these up. For this recipe, I only need about half of this large onion and one green bell pepper. But because we're doing meal prep, another thing I find really helpful during the week is to go ahead and have some chopped onion and chopped up veggies ready to go in your fridge and freezer. It's one last step when you're cooking during the week and I know I'm going to use them. I'm gonna put half in a container away in the fridge for later. And same with the bell pepper, I'm chopping my one up for now and two for later and actually storing this diced green bell pepper in the freezer. These are perfect to pull out when I need to make a pot of chili or soups that I'm putting them in. I'm also grabbing a bowl to keep on the side for my discard pile. It helps save trips back and forth to the garbage can when I'm doing a big meal prep. And now grabbing my turkey sausage links, I'm just gonna give a half package of these, about six links, a rough chop so they're in small enough pieces to go into our egg cups. Spray avocado oil is my favorite to use when I'm sauteing veggies on the stovetop. It keeps the WW points down, it's a healthy fat, and it cleans up really easily. And now we're just gonna go ahead and start sauteing our raw onions and bell pepper. Then we're gonna add in the chopped up sausage just at the end, it is already cooked. So we just wanna bring all these flavors together real quick before we fill them into our egg cups. For our egg mixture, we're going to go ahead and crack nine eggs. Add three tablespoons of milk and then whisk together. You can also add in at this time salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, however you want to season your eggs. Okay, y'all, I have my little filling station all set up and ready to go with all of my ingredients ready. I have a regular size muffin tin. This is the one I'll be using for Josh and I's bites, the ones that are gonna have the sausage, bell pepper, and onion mixture in them, as well as some spinach and cheddar cheese and hash brown bits. This mini muffin pan, um, it's silicone. I absolutely love it for regular muffins or making brownie bites, anything like that. Um, I think I just got it at like Bed Bath & Beyond one day. And they're the perfect size to make just some plain egg and cheese ones for my toddler Lila. And they're the perfect size. So one or two of these um, on a plate in the morning, warmed up in the microwave with some fruit is a great breakfast for her. So I have our shredded hash browns. I love this bag from Trader Joe's because it's resealable and you just take out what you need at a time. I just roughly with my hands ripped up some spinach leaves. This is the sausage, bell pepper, and onion mix that we warmed through and sauteed in the pan. I would definitely recommend sauteing ahead of time, even though the turkey sausage is cooked, um, but the onion and bell pepper. Otherwise, we're only putting these in the oven for about 20 minutes on 375, so your veggies will be super crunchy if you don't pre-saute them. I like half saute them, they're not soggy yet, they still have a little bit of crunch to them, so they'll have some good texture in the bites. Um, but if you go too much of a saute, they might be a little mushy. If you don't cook them at all, they're gonna be pretty raw inside of those egg bites. Um, here is about three quarters cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I just used the regular kind because my daughter's using them too, but you could, for watching points on WW plan, um, do the reduced fat shredded cheddar too. I've used that, that works as well, and it's still really good. Here's our egg mixture. It ended up being, I added a couple things to it. So it ended up being nine eggs, 
three tablespoons of milk, some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder and onion powder. Um, again, I'll link the recipes in the description box. Go check out the blogs and support those bloggers from where I got them. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just spray these muffin cups real quick. Um, just lightly, they're both nonstick pans, so you don't really need a lot. And then we're gonna layer everything in, in the oven at 375. So let's get this guy preheated. All right. To assemble the egg muffins, I'm going to start by putting about a tablespoon or two of shredded hash browns in the bottom of each muffin cup. Then we're going to layer on top any meat or veggies you want to add to yours. I'm transferring our egg mixture into a glass measuring cup that has a lip on it so I can easily pour it and fill each individual muffin cup. Then once I fill those with an egg mixture, I'm sprinkling on about a tablespoon of cheese to each muffin. Now they're ready to head into the oven at 375 for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay guys, I don't know what I was thinking. I just did that recipe, which only makes enough for one set of 12 regular size muffins. So I went ahead and I mixed up some more egg and milk mixture. All I put in this one was a little bit of salt because these minis are gonna be for mostly my toddler. I mean, Josh and I will eat them too, but she's a toddler. She's not big on seasoning or pepper or anything in hers. So I mixed up a couple more eggs and all I have in the bottoms of these are some of the hash browns. I'm going to go ahead and pour these in. Our other muffins are cooking and we'll see how they all come out. Oh, those turned out really good. I learned a few things. This is my first time doing them. Um, don't overfill the eggs. <laughs> they puffed up really high and then they actually ended up taking a little longer to cook. So if you only fill your muffin tins three quarters of the way, they'll end up much better off and only needing to get for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I also hadn't realized that that was only a recipe for a single 12 muffin batch, but I'm glad, you know, we got to try them out now. They are really good. I'm curious to see. I'm going to let them cool down and try to re-zap one in the microwave to make sure we like how they taste and everything. And then I'll probably go ahead and make another 12 full-size muffin batch. Maybe this time I'll throw in bacon instead of turkey sausage. We'll see. Um, but you can play around with this recipe any way you want. You can do just meat and cheese in it. You can do all veggies. Um, you can just do the cheese and eggs. Those ones are about to come out of the oven. Egg muffins reheated beautifully. They were so delicious. Um, I'm definitely going to make some more varieties and have a set to go with probably two or three dozen in our freezer. One more thing I'm going to mention about the egg muffins is after they're done cooking, don't let them sit in the pan. Immediately transfer them to a wire rack because condensation can change the taste of them a little bit. That's the tip I read and I wanted to pass it on to y'all if you try it. So transfer them, let them cool completely, and then all you have to do is put them in some Ziplocs and in the freezer they go. Okay guys, egg muffins are done. We're on to our next kind of muffin. Lila, what are we making? Oh, probably. We're making carrot muffin bread. Lila wanted to help me do some baking. So Lila is going to help out this time. Super easy recipe. We're going to go ahead and double it this time. I'm going to make sure I'm doing the recipe right to actually double it. <laughs> Unlike the eggs, we'll make more of those this weekend. But we are going to go ahead and double this muffin recipe so we can put some in the freezer. And then Lila and I will have some for breakfast and snacks. Will those be so yummy? Yeah. And they hide a little veggie in there too. Ingredients needed for our carrot cake mini muffins include flour, carrots, butter, vanilla extract, ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg, salt, baking soda. I'm using a combination of honey and pure Vermont maple syrup, as well as 
unsweetened applesauce, and two eggs. Okay, we got our carrots all peeled, and now we gotta grate them up. Oh, that home too. Okay. I know they make shredded carrots, but these just taste better. Yeah, they taste better. They're my favorite fruit. They're my favorite vegetable? All that good carrot. We need two cups of applesauce, two eggs. Apparently running out of ingredients is my theme for today. I'm doubling this recipe, so I actually need a whole cup of honey. I'm not gonna get this out of here. So I'm gonna use as much honey as I have into one cup and then top it off with pure maple syrup. It's the same sugar substitute kind of situation. So you can mix half and half, it won't be a problem. It'll actually probably taste really good in this recipe with our muffins. a half cup of melted butter and two teaspoons of vanilla. We're going to get all of this working together. Now we're moving on to our dry ingredients. We need three cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon salt, two tablespoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and whisk all together. We're going to combine half of the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. Then we'll add our shredded carrots, two cups, and then we'll fold in the rest of the dry and mix it all together gently. They're then going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for 12 to 25 minutes. I also chose to add in about a cup of raisins. This is optional, but something that my family likes. And this batch, which is a double recipe, ended up making 36 mini carrot cake muffins, and they each come in at two points on the WW Blue program. Okay guys, here is that English muffin bread I was talking about. It is so stinking delicious. So much better than a store-bought English muffin. I have the recipe linked in the description above, so go ahead and check it out. It comes out with a nice crust and a fluffy inside with all the nooks and crannies that traditional English muffins have. This recipe I was able to get two small loaves out of and 10 slices per loaf, which breaks down to being four points per slice on the WW Blue Plan. I know that seems to be like a lot for a slice of toast or bread, but hey, I say if you're gonna eat bread, make it homemade and delicious. And here I'm gonna give you a little peek at how I'm bulk meal prepping our meat for the month. These three chickens are about 15 pounds of whole chicken. I'm gonna trim off excess skin or fat and then lightly pat it dry and simple seasoning on it. Just some olive oil, salt, and pepper. Once these are cooked down, they're actually gonna lose about half their weight once you pull the lean meat from the bones. I don't include any of the bones, the cartilage, the skin, all that's gonna get discarded to the side and we're gonna use that for our bone broth in a little bit. So we ended up after 15 pounds of whole chicken with about seven pounds of shredded chicken meat. This I ended up portioning out into one pound and two pound packages. That way I can put them in the freezer and just pull one smaller package out for a single meal or I can pull out a bigger two pound package for a week of meals where I know I'm gonna be using it on salads and wraps for lunches or a certain simple dinner. These came out so great on the smoker or on the grill, but you can also just do chicken breasts or whole chicken thighs in the crock pot or roasted in the oven. And it's the same principle where you're gonna get a bulk amount of shredded meat portioned and ready to go for the week. And it's easy to use and easy to plan for recipes week to week once you have that in your fridge and freezer to work from. The pork we prepared very similarly with simple seasonings on the smoker for a little while and finished in the oven. We shredded it and tried to keep only the lean parts of the meat. Even though pork shoulder will cost you about five points per serving, once you prepare it into meals with simple, flavorful ingredients that are low point, you have a great dinner. We love doing pork tacos with this because, or pork taco bowls, you can keep the points really low on the rest of the ingredients and your dinner still around 10 points. But it's a great flavorful option to mix it up from ground turkey and chicken breast. And it's important to keep yourself interested on WW, otherwise it's so much harder 
to keep going. That's why I always love finding new fun recipes. And now I'm starting our chicken bone broth. So I'm just taking all of our discarded chicken bits and the carcasses. I'm putting about two of them in the crock pot and discarding the third one. That's all that'll fit in my crock pot. Um, but once I put those two carcasses in, I'm adding just very roughly chopped, no need to peel or cut up really anything. I'm adding a few stalks of celery, a couple carrots, a whole onion, and half a clove of garlic, and then just filling with water until it just touches the top of where all of my solid food is. And then honestly, guys, all you're going to do is put this on low for 20 to 24 hours and just let it cook. The veggies are nice and soft. A lot of the color has come out of them and the color is starting to come into this really nice nutrient dense bone broth. A couple more hours to go and then I will strain it, take all the big pieces out and put it through a small sieve strainer to get any little bits and pieces and we will jar it up. It'll stay for five days in the fridge. So I'll make a soup later this week with some of it. The rest of it can be jarred in you know, an airtight sealed container and put in the freezer for up to six months. If I have a chance, I also like to go ahead and just prep some veggies at the beginning of a week. Um, this is more of a weekly meal prep than monthly, but I just went ahead and peeled and trimmed some carrots and sliced them up. These are the rainbow carrots. I think they taste just as good as the regular size orange ones and I definitely prefer full size carrots and then to chop them myself as opposed to the mini carrots. I just think they have a lot more flavor. They're so yummy in the air fryer tossed with a bit of ranch seasoning and it's a delicious zero point snack or side dish. It's so good. Um, and then I also just chopped up some celery sticks. This I can have with peanut butter for a snack or it's already prepped and washed and then I could just chop up to add into if I was making chicken salad or tuna salad during the week um, or anything else I would use them for. So it just helps to have easy and grabbable veggies and fruits in the fridge. I also go ahead and do something similar with my fruit where it's all just washed and ready to go and in big bins. And then sometimes at dinner time, I honestly just put out a container of either veggies or fruit on the table and that's our side and it's zero points. So fill up on the extra fruit and veg as opposed to wanting to go back for more snacks and sweets later in the night. This really helps. Whew, guys, I am exhausted just watching that footage back while editing. That was a lot. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's going to be it for our cooking today. But I feel like we shared a lot and hopefully you guys can get some use out of these recipes. We had the egg muffin cups, which were so yummy and you can do in so many ways by switching them up and having a great variety that you can use all month long just by taking them out of the freezer. I will say as one additional tip as we've been eating them, put them on a paper towel when you put them in the microwave then for like a minute and 30 seconds to a minute and 45 seconds for one to two of them and it'll help collect any extra moisture and the texture is much better so make sure you try that tip with your egg muffins the carrot cake mini muffins fly out of my house my toddler loves them my husband loves them they're a great breakfast in the morning two of them for four points or one for two along with some fruit or some yogurt it's a great little sweet breakfast that still has some veggie and fiber in there to help fill you up and it's obviously much better in points as a sweet breakfast than something like pancakes or waffles or french toast so it's a really great one i hope you'll try that out I also shared our English muffin bread, which I know isn't exactly WW friendly, but it's so great as a little treat to have when I make it with something like with our shredded chicken, taco soup. That's one of our staples that we use the shredded chicken that's prepped for. And taco soup is zero points the way I do it. So when your soup is zero points, you can have that piece of bread on the side. Weight Watchers is all about balance. So that's one of the things we've used our chicken for. The chicken and pork that I shared, we have it all portioned out into either one pound or two pound packages. That way I can either take out a larger package for the week and we'll use it, season it up, on salads and wraps for lunches or the one pound packages are great because that's about the amount I always need for a full recipe. And for some reason, the cooked shredded meat 
defrosts way faster than needing to remember to grab out like a frozen chunk of chicken breasts. I'm that person. I always would forget to take things out of the freezer and then my meal plan for the night is like scrapped because I forgot to defrost the meat. So this has been really helpful for me because I'm that person who forgets. I can remember at nap time when I put Lila down because that's normally when I start thinking ahead finally till dinner time in a few hours, like, oh, what do I need to do? And it, no, it has no problem defrosting in a couple hours or, you know, enough that I can start cooking the recipe. So that's another reason I really love it. We use the pork and the chicken in a lot of Mexican dishes that we love, tacos, enchiladas, taco salads. Um, taco soup, like I mentioned, but we also use it for things like making chicken salad for lunches for a week. Or with the pork, I've used it to make Cuban sandwiches or barbecue shredded pork, which you can put on either sandwiches or on salads, or sometimes we make bowls with it over rice. So there's so many ways you can use it. And once that chicken and pork portion is like cooked, shredded, and hassle-free, ready to go, it's so much easier to get creative in the kitchen and make some fun new dinners. And my daughter's awake. I also post a lot of my daily meals on Instagram. I know a lot of you really loved the What I Eat in a Day video that I just posted, and I will definitely be posting more of those soon, so check back. But on Instagram, make sure you're following me over there because I often post at least once a day a meal that I'm doing and how many points they are. It helps to keep me accountable, and it helps share ideas in the community about what you can make on WW that's great in your points for breakfast, lunch, dinner, low point snacks. So I'm sharing over there all the time. Make sure you check it out. Well, Lila is now awake. I can hear her calling me on the monitor. So that's all for today. Thanks so much for joining me again. And until next time, bye. I hope.